Hey guys, Matt here again. Um, today I want to do a verse, uh, a section of scripture that God really showed me when I was encountering some false teaching at a, at, uh, a place that I preach. And uh, there's so much, there's so much on false teaching in the, in the Bible. Paul really hits it. Jesus talked about it. Beware of the east of the Pharisees. Galatians 1, Paul says, Anybody who preaches another gospel, uh, let him be accursed. 1 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, Titus 1, 7 through 10, I think. It's all over the place. 2 Peter 2. Um, there's so many warnings against false teachers. But I want to read a, a portion of Scripture that really makes it so black and white. And it deals with this topic of ecumenism. And uh, if you don't know, ecumenism is, is uh, trying to reach across to different religions or different beliefs and, and pretending that we can have fellowship with them. And uh, we see this a lot today. We see a lot of people uh, writing letters, a common word between us to the Muslims and, and uh, you know, uh, Rick Warren, you know, of course, is, is, wants to solve global warming and, and there's five points that he wants to work on and it's... It's really, it's not just madness, it's, it's sin. Um, and, and now there's a ditch here, of course, because the, the, the ditch is not, we don't have fellowship with unbelievers, but we also, we love them and we, we tell them the truth, right? And uh, so we got to be bold, we got to be honest, and we got we to gotta stick to God's word. So let me read this to you guys. It's 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. And... Uh, I'm going to stop after the first sentence because the first sentence, you could stop. It's one of those passages where that could be it. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's it. I'm going to, I'm going to read more, but that's it. That's God's word. Do not, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Do you see that? You see that, that perfect line in the sand? There's two groups. There's righteous, not because of anything we did, but because He made us righteous through the blood of Christ, and lawlessness. Okay, there's, you're in one camp or the other. There's no, there's no straddling that line. There's no having one foot in each world, no. You're either righteous, you're born again, or you're not. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? Isn't that unloving? No, it's God's Word. It's darkness. It's darkness. We, we don't have fellowship with darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? That means the devil. Of course, he doesn't have any accord with the devil. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Whoa, the temple of God. We need to chew on that. We are the temple of the living God. And that, in fact, that's the next verse. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. See, we're God's tabernacle. He, he made us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made us to exact specifications. Why? So He could live in us so we could be born again. And we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have Christ in us, and we are all in God. It's kind of a mystery, but it's a beautiful mystery. We are the temple of the living God. If you're overweight, if you're skinny, if you're balding, if you're, you're sick, you're healthy, it doesn't matter. You're still the temple of the living God. Be encouraged. You are the temple of the living God. Okay? I will, be, I will dwell in them and walk among them. He will dwell in us. Would they have let? Uh, would Moses as? Uh, would Moses let a uh, a soothsayer or a, a, a somebody who practices witchcraft or a prostitute or something like that? Would would he have let them in the tabernacle? No, of course not. We shouldn't either. Surely, come out from among them and be separate. We're supposed to be separate. We're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. We're supposed to be separate. There's a line of delineation. We've been pulled out of that. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Do not touch what is unclean 
And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. See, a lot of people today think it's unloving to tell the truth. And in actuality, getting together with a group of people that aren't born again to do a, a mission, especially a mission that we probably shouldn't be worried about too much anyways, like global warming, it's a sin. And it's also the most unloving thing you could do, and it's the most cowardice thing you could do. Now I want to tell you why. Because if you believe that you must be born again, otherwise you go to hell, what you do when you get together with other groups, when you practice ecumenic, ecumenism, sorry, it's a tough word, you're basically saying, I know that you practice this sin or you belong in this cult, and you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to love you anyways, we're going to go clean out that river, and, and uh, that's it. I, I just, I accept you the way you are, and, and meanwhile, the person goes to hell and you go to heaven. How, how loving is that? That's not love. That's cowardice. That's cowardice. That's hatred. Love tells the truth, right? Um, if, uh, if Jesus was walking around... And he went up to the Pharisees and he said, let's stop all this fussing and fighting and let's just, you know what, I noticed that when I got baptized in the Jordan, the Jordan was kind of dirty. Okay, so you don't believe I'm God. You know what, that's okay. Let's just, let's agree to disagree. In fact, I'm going to write this letter and we'll call it a common word between us and, and we'll go fix the environment. No. No, he didn't do that. Neither did Paul, neither did Peter. See, our concern isn't the environment. Our concern is people's souls. Because if we clean up somebody's yard and they go to hell, they go to hell with a clean yard. If we, if we give somebody a sandwich and don't tell them the good news and they don't get saved, they go to hell with a full belly, but they still go to hell. See, we should love. We should be concerned about AIDS. We should be concerned about people starving. Absolutely. But we should help them to bring our king glory by giving them the truth while we feed them. See? We shouldn't get together with other groups. It's, it's, it's a sin. And uh, it's, it's ruining our church. 